It's no secret that big tech and Silicon Valley are not friendly to the conservative cause. But are the ambitions of the Silicon Valley elites also helping one of America's biggest rivals on the world stage and one of our biggest enemies? Well, that's the question my next guest answers in his new book, Red Handed, How American Elites Get Rich Helping China Win. The author, Peter Schweitzer, joins me now. Peter, welcome to Washington Watch. Great to be with you, Tony. Thanks for having me. So let me just start with this. What is the ultimate goal of the Chinese Communist Party's collaboration with Silicon Valley? Well, they're quite explicit about it. They have a strategy called elite capture. And basically what it is, Tony, is their goal, and they've stated this openly, is to surpass the United States and to become the supreme power uh, on the planet. Uh, and rather than going toe to toe with the United States and our powerful economic system, they simply want to co-opt elites. So they call it elite capture. And their theory is if they can neuter our elites, they can effectively win this competition uh, without having going to having to go head to head with the United States. Uh, President Xi has said that science and technology is a national weapon. Is, is Silicon Valley helping China achieve that, uh, that goal? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there are numerous examples I cite in the book where Silicon Valley titans um, suck up to Xi in all kinds of ways, but in a very real material sense, uh, we know that Microsoft, we know that Google are doing joint research projects where they are putting in capital, they are putting in intellectual capital into China, and those research projects are with institutions linked to the Chinese military. Uh, and they are doing research on artificial intelligence, which President Xi has said is the technology that will give them the, quote, commanding heights in their competition with the United States. There are numerous other examples as well. Bill Gates, for example, personally has invested in Chinese companies, a company BYD, for example, which is involved in developing missile technology for China. Uh, so there is a very serious problem that these tech executives don't have an allegiance to the United States that we would expect and don't seem to be particularly concerned that they are subsidizing and helping the Chinese military. I mean, Peter, there's no secret that the Chinese military, there's no firewall between them and the private sector tech companies in China. They have access to everything. That's right. In fact, they are required by law. Uh, there's legislation that calls for civilian military fusion. So if you are a civilian company in China, you're required by law to turn over military-related applications. And the problem is, is that Silicon Valley executives don't seem to be particularly concerned about this. In fact, Microsoft as a company actually takes interns from the Chinese People's Liberation Army. I mean, it's that blatant. Um, and they don't seem to be particularly concerned that this is going on. So, uh, Peter, before I, I, I go further with s some more questions, where can folks get a copy of uh, your book, Red Handed? Uh, you can find it on any online site. It's number one on Barnes & Noble and on Amazon, and you can find it in bookstores around the country. Okay, so, Peter, I, this is probably a question that's on the minds of many people. What's the motivation here? Is this all about money? Uh, it's a great question. A part of it's money, but when you consider a guy like Bill Gates, who's worth $100 billion, does he really need more money? I think there's something else at work here, Tony. I, I actually quote in the chapter on Silicon Valley a professor from MIT in the 1970s named Professor Wiesenbaum, and he describes the fact that computer programmers can develop a kind of godlike complex because they get to construct with coding the universe in which things behave uh, in this platform. So you think about Facebook, uh, Mark Zuckerberg and his programmers are the ultimate arbitrators. What you find, Tony, is that a lot of these executives in Silicon Valley and on Wall Street have an, a, an admiration for the dictatorial regime in China. They'll use phrases like, you know, the Chinese government's so much more efficient than the United States. They make decisions so much more quickly. Well, of course, autocratic governments have that advantage. So it's about more than just money. I think there is actually an attraction, not so much maybe to the ideology, but to the efficiencies of an autocratic government, plus the fact that, of course, uh, the Chinese government uh, gives all kinds of awards and accolades to these uh, business executives. But, but clearly they have to know that they're jeopardizing na national security. I mean, you had this uh, joint project between Google and Facebook uh, with this underwater cable 
uh, going yeah. to Hong Kong with the Chinese with the Chinese firm connected to the Chinese government. Uh, the U.S. Federal Trade Commission blocked that last year or in 2020. Um, I mean, th- they got to see this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, that's the cable is a perfect example. I mean, Facebook and Google decide to finance this cable that's going to connect Hong Kong with San Francisco. And as you point out, they hire a military contractor in China to do that construction. And it's only because the FBI and the Justice Department says that this would create an unprecedented opportunity for Chinese espionage that the project is halted. Now, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that the uh, people at Facebook and at Google know a lot more about technology than the Department of Justice. So if the Department of Justice knows that this has created an unprecedented opportunity for espionage, you can bet that Google and Facebook knew that from the beginning. But I think, honestly, they just didn't care because they're blinded by their ambitions as it relates to China. Amazing. Very dangerous. Peter, great to have you on the program. We're going to talk more about this because I think it is fascinating and it's it's something the American people need to know. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. God bless, Tony.